Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to share about half a dozen um, native trees and shrubs that offer uh, persistent fruit that hangs on uh, throughout the winter. So having fruit that doesn't fall or rot immediately provides really important um, emergency uh, food resources for our overwintering birds, um, those that stay year-round and those that um, end up in our, our neighborhood over the winter months. And uh, it's really important uh, to have those resources for wildlife, so I, I thought I'd share a little bit about um, six species that you might be interested in either conserving or um, adding to your landscape habitats. Uh, fleshy fruits, things like berries, droops, palms, they offer um, carbohydrates and protein for energy um, and sometimes fats as well as antioxidants for inhibiting the production of free radicals um, which damage cells during stressful conditions. So when birds, for example, are migrating in the spring or fall, um, they experience oxidative stress when they burn fats to fuel the long flights. And um, fruits with high antioxidant capacity help to um, alleviate those stress factors. So uh, fruits with vitamin E and phenols, um, a lot of times those are colored um, some of them have colored compounds called anthocyanins that give the fruit uh, the bright purple or maroon coloration. They're often good sources of antioxidants for birds. So the following species are really helpful at uh, the end of fall migration, supporting wildlife through the winter months, and might even be helpful uh, for those early spring arriving migrants. The first species I want to share is wild crab apple. This is a native tree. The scientific name is Mollus coronaria. And this species uh, flowers in May after the leaves start to emerge. And it has really pretty white, um, very fragrant and showy flowers with five petals that are insect pollinated. And the fruit is a palm that is round and it's also very fragrant with a waxy surface. Um, it is edible, although the flesh is pretty tart and sour. And um, it hangs on to the tree through the winter mount months and it uh, does not rot uh, until the following spring and actually freeze thaw um, over those winter months, make it a little more palatable and help provide um, food for our winter birds and um, early spring migrants. Um, humans can also use the fruit to make preserves and jellies. This particular species likes to be in full sun. Um, you'll find it naturally in um, some disturbed habitats like old fields, pastures, fence rows, um, wooded edges and along streams often. Um, in the understory of oak and beech maple forests. And it occurs mostly across the southern half of the lower peninsula of Michigan. Um, and it feeds many upland game birds and songbirds um, that'll eat the fruit, including woodpeckers, sapsuckers, flickers, um, rough grouse and pheasants, bobwhite quail, uh, blue jays, catbirds, orioles, robins, the cedar waxwing you see here, um, bluebirds, titmice, towhees, and sparrows, um, among others. And it has uh, densely branched thorny um, twigs, and so it will help provide good nesting habitat and cover for bird species like the yellow-breasted chat, song sparrows, and uh, orchard orioles, and other birds. It also serves as a larval host plant for the caterpillars of some of our native butterflies, including the viceroy, red-spotted purple, eastern tiger swallowtail, and striped hair streak. 
next is the a native shrub, a high bush cranberry, viburnum triloba. And this species has really pretty flowers in uh, mid to late spring. They are flat topped uh, clusters of white flowers that can be um, about a decimeter across and uh, they are also insect pollinated. The fruit is an orange red droop that forms in late summer, early fall, and then persists through the winter months. It is pretty acidic when raw, um, somewhat palatable when cooked. Um, it used to be used as a cranberry substitute. It does have kind of a wet dog smell when crushed. Um, just note that there is uh, an invasive counterpart, the European highbush cranberry viburnum opulus that, that should be avoided. Um, that one, the fruit kind of smells like vomit. So although it was once used by humans, I think uh, these uh, persistent fruits are probably better left to the wildlife. This particular um, highbush cranberry is a tall spreading shrub that can get up to 15 feet tall. It has many um, arching stems that form a dense rounded crown and it will sprout from the root collar to form um, like an enlarging clone. It likes uh, sun to part sun um, conditions and will take wet to mesic sites. You'll often find it um, in natural ecosystems in floodplains, along streams, in open swamps. It does have lovely fall red color, a uh, great aesthetic value too for using in your landscape. Um, and as far as uh, wildlife support goes, the squirrels will eat the droops in midwinter and birds like cedar waxwings and American robins will eat the droops at the end of winter um, when they have ferment, fermented somewhat um, from freeze-thaw cycles and become a little more palatable. Another native shrub is wild rose, Rosa acicularis, and this species flowers uh, mid-spring into mid-summer. Um, it has a deep rose pink uh, fragrant flower with five petals, so our native roses just have a, a single whorl of petals. And the fruit forms in late summer, and it's a fleshy hip enclosing an aggregate of achenes. And it's, uh, the hip is ellipsoid or, or pear-shaped red and will persist um, into the winter months. Uh, rose hips in general uh, can be used by humans as well for uh, teas and jellies. And this low um, erect bushy shrub gets about one to three feet tall. It is clonal and um, will uh, spread and its stems are covered with slender, straight, unequal size prickles. Um, so this one is painful to walk through. So you'll want to um, think about keeping it or purposely planting it in places where there won't be a lot of um, foot traffic. It makes a good natural uh, fence or border. And you'll find this species um, often in the northern lower peninsula and upper peninsula of Michigan. It's good at tolerating thin soils over calcareous or basic substrates. It likes full sun to part sun and it supports our songbirds and, and small mammals, um, upland game birds. They'll eat uh, both the buds and uh, the hips. Another native shrub with persistent winter fruit is staghorn sumac, Rus typhina. This one, the flowers open after the leaves have flushed. Um, it flowers in June. And uh, this plant is dioecious. Uh, meaning two houses. So you'll have a plant with all male flowers and a plant with all female flowers. So to get good winter fruit for your wildlife, it's important to plant this species in multiples or keep multiple clones going if you have it in your landscape so you get good fruit production. The fruit, um, it's a dark red hairy uh, droop that uh, is in a terminal panicle, so up um, at the tips of the branches. 
And these hairy droops are juicy with a sour lemony taste. And uh, humans can use the droops to make lemony drinks and jellies. There's just quite the process involved filtering out all the irritating um, hairs. And the stems and twigs are also covered with brown to reddish hairs, uh, making it look like a young buck's velvety antlers, hence the common name staghorn sumac. This species um, gets 10 to 30 feet tall and is definitely a clonal shrub spreading from the root system. Um, and so you definitely want to give this one plenty of room to do its thing because it, it'll just keep um, sprouting from the root collar um, and the root system. That's just its natural way of growing. Um, it prefers full sun and it's often planted or found colonizing along our maintained um, highway slopes and rights of way. And it's uh, common to abundant throughout the lower peninsula, um, especially in the southern two-thirds of our counties. It has bright red fall color, really beautiful. Um, you'll see this along the highways um, in the fall. And it supports uh, many of our bird species, um, things like robins, bluebirds, cedar waxwings, will all eat the um, juicy hairy droops that persist over the winter. And um, it will serve as an emergency food uh, resource for these birds and, and will be eaten um, only when little else is available. And the foliage, the branches, and twigs of sumacs are often browsed by cottontail rabbits and white-tailed deer. And the woody material um, is particularly important as a source of food during the winter as well. So there, in general, is quite a bit of ecological value to our native um, sumac species. Another native shrub is maple leaf viburnum, viburnum acerifolium. And this viburnum species has uh, yellow, white, or even sometimes pinkish flowers in the spring. Um, they're terminal, so they'll be out um, at the ends of the branches and they're very pretty um, and insect pollinated. The fruit forms in late summer to early fall and at maturity is a purplish black droop and these droops are winter persistent. This particular species likes part sun to shade, which is a very um, difficult situation for a lot of um, species. So the fact that it can tolerate drier, shady sites um, definitely makes this one to think about uh, for your landscape. It gets four to six feet tall, the branches are usually fairly short, and um, the fact that it can take well-drained sites to mesic sites um, really makes it very useful in the landscape. Out in natural ecosystems, you'll find it in the um, understory of oak hickory forests and sugar maple beech forests, as well as um, pine-dominated woodlands. It's common throughout the lower peninsula and can be found in some western counties in the upper peninsula. And the maple leaf viburnum fruits are eaten by species like rough grouse and many woodland songbirds. Um, to a lesser extent, they're also eaten by uh, small mammals like the white-footed um, and woodland deer mice, um, eastern chipmunks, and various tree squirrels and white-tailed deer may browse on the twigs and leaves. Last but certainly not least is a native shrub known as winterberry or Michigan holly, Ilex verticillata. And verticillata refers to axillary clusters of flowers, which lead to very striking um, fruit in the fall and winter months. This species doesn't really have showy flowers, um, but they do bloom in late spring, early summer and are insect pollinated. The fruit though is plenty showy. It's a bright red droop um, that's winter persistent 
This species is also dioecious, so you want to make sure you plant it in multiples so that you have male and female um, plants and get good fruit production. This is a shrub, or sometimes it takes a small tree form up to 16 feet tall. It tends to be fairly densely branched um, with a round crown, and it is clonal through uh, root sprouting. So again, you want to give it um, plenty of room to do its thing. It is found throughout much of the state, and um, it likes wet soils, so you can find it naturally in deciduous swamps, along woodland edges, lake or marsh edges. Um, it can certainly take saturated soils, but it doesn't tolerate flooding, like standing water, um, during the growing season. Um, it prefers sun to part sun, and it is a good landscape choice if you have um, wet to moist soils. It has colorful leaves that turn yellow to maroon in the fall. And it is deciduous though, um, you, not like a, the not non-native hollies you might be familiar with. Um, and the red fruits certainly provide um, winter interest as well as winter food for um, the birds. And it's eaten by many songbirds and some upland game birds. Um, and because they, the fruit really persists in good condition throughout the winter, it's an important source of emergency food for many species. The white-footed mouse will eat the droops and cache the seeds, and white-tailed deer may browse the leaves and twigs to a limited extent. I hope this gives you some good ideas for species to keep or add to your landscape with great winter persistent fruit to support our native wildlife. I wanted to give special thanks to Larry Abraham for sharing his neat uh, waxwing photography um, with us, letting us use it for educational purposes, as well as uh, Jeannie Henderson, Beth Martin, um, and Rita Seston for sharing uh, additional plant photos so that I could show you these wonderful species. Take care and have a good week.